Brands Hatch, December, as traditional a Grand Prix fixture as Silverstone in July. But the British Rallycross Grand Prix has a life and atmosphere all its own. It has a star all its own, Will Gollop, the new European champion, which is a world title to all intents and purposes. He's also won this event on two occasions, most notably with a stirring drive in 1988. But he's also clearly lost it on two occasions. In 1990, a mistake when challenging for the lead and a likely victory was gone, along with a large proportion of the chasing pack. And then last year, seemingly in control of the race, and then as he battled a puncture, he was caught and hit first by Pat Duran and then by Rob Gibson. As he retired the car at precisely the same point on the circuit as 12 months earlier, the frustration was clear. Will Gollop regards this race as his most important of the year. So Gollop and the famous Black Metro were back, now boosted by the proud badge of European champion. And the heats posed little problem. Gollop would qualify at the front of the grid for the main final. But others would struggle, notably last year's surprise Grand Prix winner Pat Duran. Twelve months earlier, luck had been on his side, and when Gollop went out, Duran had taken the big victory that he'd always threatened. Everything had gone right that day, but in the second round of qualifying heats this time, Duran suffered. The Ford RS200 screams off the start line, but never reaches paddock bend and tumble downhill. Rock shaft failure, which is a problem, but not a crisis in this sport of second chances. High speed props gone. That's the prop shaft which takes the, the power from the engine to the gearbox. I take long to fix. And, uh, it depends how much damage it's done. Because it's obviously when it's turning at 7,000, 10,000 RPM, it snaps. You take a lot of things with it. The repair was accomplished in time for the third qualifying heat, where Duran still had the chance to set the time that will put him straight into the main A final. Everything was going well off the start line as he powered away from the second row and was in the lead as the field swung down tumble down hill for the first time. But back onto the tarmac, Duran swung wide, which gave Mike Turpin and Pekka Antonen the chance to barge past. More importantly, it meant that Duran now had to rely on winning the B final to qualify for the main Grand Prix. But before that, the C final. Once again, only the winner would make progress in the competition, and the race is described by Tiff Nidell. Seven cars then line up for this four and a half lap C final, all action in rallycross. Mike Quaife on pole position is escorted alongside Anders Norstead and the Nissan Sunny. Road two sees Tor Holm and an escort Cosworth, Clive Richardson and Nova, Warwick Barnes in a Sierra Cosworth. They await the marshal to tell them the lights are going to change from red to green. The marshal runs, the revs rise, creeping forwards, four-wheel drive cars on the front row of the grid. They both make a good start, but uh, Oh, not so good. There's a lot of problems there. That's Warwick Barnes. In fact, that's Poleman Quaife's teammate. Barnes not having so much happiness. And Quaife, though, into the lead through Paddock. They're the battling uh, Nova and Metro, Richardson and Ward. They're battling over third place. The two front row men pulling away slightly. Quaife and Norstead pulling away from that battling. There's the Beetle up from the back row of the grid doing so well. Peter Harold ahead of Tor Holm. So no problems for Mike Quaife, he gets round through it onto the ninth edge, this very tricky, muddy part of the circuit that's just a long left-hand corner. Norstead pulling away from this huge battle now. The Beetle sideways, the two little front-wheel drive cars, the Metro and the Fiesta side by side, trying to get through there was Dave Ward, but Richardson holds on to third place. Quaife slides, the tarmac even as greasy as the mud here. See how the dirt comes out onto the tarmac of this brand set circuit. They're going backwards around the club circuit now, through the little S's that link to the bottom to the top, the charge up to Paddock Hill Bend, the famous Paddock Hill Bend. In the background, Richardson gets the Nova sideways, but uh, David Ward can't get on the side, and that Beetle still are held with a four-wheel drive escort. So uh, there's a little two-wheel drive battle, and here it is. Clive Richardson and Dave Ward both only got front-wheel drive, the two of the head of them with four-wheel drive. So a little personal battle for honours in the two-wheel drive class. And that's Harold, rear-wheel drive in that Volkswagen. Tor Holm trying to get the traction, trying to get up the inside, get up to Druid's Hill Bend, but Harold chops him off in traditional Druid's Corner style. 
Richardson still holding that third place ahead of David Ward. Through that tricky transition from Tarmac onto this muddy knife edge. And again there, we see Ward trying that outside line on Richardson. He tries to go the long way round the outside, but uh, Ward can't get through. Richardson keeps the place into Poppy's drop. Little left-right flick and back onto the racing track, but very, very slippy, trying to get traction, trying to get those front wheels to grip as much as possible. Up front, though, the four-wheel drive battle goes on, and in fact, the Swede Norsted looking to close in a little bit on Mike Quaife, while his battle for third place still as exciting as ever. And Harold, they're actually closing in a little bit in the Volkswagen Beetle, taking home with him. So this almost a four-car battle now for third place. They go into Paddock Hill Bend. Richardson out front, Ward trying to close, trying everything he knows in that Metro, flicking it into these tricky S's that takes them back out at the bottom of Paddock Hill Bend. Holm now trying to get past Harold, trying to use the grip, pull inside now, get the traction out of the four-wheel drive, get the drive up the hill. This time it looks like he must have gone inside. Harold's still trying to shut the door. But out front, Quaife really still on his own. He's looking good, going on to now his last lap. Norstead seemingly having uh, no real answer for out the front. Winner takes all, of course, in this B final. This is a little battle for pride. And there, oh, a touch there. Ward again trying to get around the outside. Richardson again not managing it. It's such a tricky manoeuvre to try and pull off because you need to get into this right Poppy's drop just after the long, long curving. So Ward only really able to look around the outside on that knife edge, and that's a very tricky place. But Quaife, no troubles at all for him. He's out front, leading just half a lap to the chequered flag. But uh, there's a pretty slowing, and there's a punch. He's got a punch to the front left, so Quaife now, he's only got half a lap to get to the final to get through to the chequered flag. Can he hold on ahead of Norstead? That front left tyre flailing on the rim. Norstead must know he's got a chance now there. The rim digging into the tarmac. Norstead slides wide. He's overdone it a bit, Norstead. Has he wasted the opportunity? Way up to Druids for the last time. There, the rubber almost off the rim. Now he's got three wheels still to drive himself to the finish line. Can he get through? Norstead tries the outside. He can't get through there. If Quaif can just get the power down across the night. But Norstead, though, takes a fly around the outside and takes the chequered flag to win a very dramatic C final there. And uh, Quaif must be bitterly disappointed. Richardson held on to that third place. And it looked like Tor Holm actually must have battled through in that last lap to fourth. But uh, Norstead it is who moves forward, moves on to the back row of the grid for the B final. And, uh, a very disappointed Quaife there because really he had that race in the bag. But Norstead wins it from Quaife. Richardson won the two-wheel drive battle in third. Holm a good fourth from Dave Ward and Peter Harold. So Norstead then takes up his position on the back row of the grid for the B final. I think it's got a big job for him to get through to win this one. But Pat Doran, all those troubles he had in the heats, he's also in this B final. He's on the second row of the grid in his RS200, hoping to get through. Two more Ford RS200s on the front row of the grid. And Trevor Hopkins actually choosing the left-hand side of the circuit for his pole position with Gary Baker alongside him. Showing road two with Duran, his Swede Bertel Pearson in his big Audi. And then there are three Metro 6R4s of Mark Flaherty, Mike Turpin, and another Swede, Bent Wickland, lining up behind them. So once again, awaiting this charge to Paddock Hill Bend. And there's a lot of horsepower, six, seven hundred horsepower turbocharged engines to wait to switch from red to green. Duran waits, he makes a four-ish start, jams it in another gear, and he's a slowing again. More trouble for Duran up front, and there's Spit. Oh, and off to the left went Gary. Big shunt. Back out into the middle of the circuit. That was Gary Baker uh, sliding right out in the foreground there. That's Ben Wickland's Metro spinning round. He's not, there's another Metro, Mike Turpin gets going again, but it's Baker that had the big accident. And there, thankfully, we see Gary getting out of his very bent Ford RS200, the emergency services, as ever, on there in a flash, red flags flying. This B final will be rerun when they've removed the cars from the circuit. Gary Baker there, perfectly unharmed, amazing after that huge impact that's run. But Pat Duran, meanwhile, has got another chance to get into the B final. Prop shaft again. Do you want to see him get back there? You've got one. Have they? Yeah. Right, Having used his own spare drive shaft of that qualifying heat problem, the Durand team managed to borrow another drive shaft from fellow RS200 owner Trevor Hopkins. Hopkins here it was that led this charge to Paddock. In the background, you see the Metros. That's Turpin and Wickland getting well out of shape. 
Baker gets bounced off to the right and hits the Armco Paris with such a force that the car just comes spinning back into the middle of the track and uh, it's going to take more than a tow rope to remove Baker's car from the track. Meanwhile, the survivors line up for the restart of this P-Final. Hopkins now on his own in the front of the grid. Duran back on the grid, takes a steady start. This time he's managed to get away from the grid. Third, fourth, fifth gears, charging up the paddock, overtaking Metros as the turbo boost comes in. But once again, it's Trevor Hopkins that clearly gets into the lead, up to paddock. Uh, Hopkins ahead of this battle for Duran, and that's Wickland trying to force his way through on the inside, and Duran clips the tyres, the bodywork flies up in the air. Pat doesn't know, we see Wickland's nose trying to get back up the inside, but Duran holds on to third place, and Wickland now back battling with Turpin for fourth. Up front, though, Hopkins ahead of the big Audi. Duran working hard. If you watch his mouth, the balaclava blowing out with the exhalation of air, breathing deeply, the exhilaration of this 800 horsepower of car on mud, four-wheel drive, and an awful lot of hard work. Duran then in third, he's got to win this B final to get into the final to try and repeat his victory of last year. It's hard work and you can see Durham working very hard indeed as they come up to finish one lap. Hopkins ahead of Pearson in the big Audi clips the tyres and uh, Pearson trying very hard in that big car and Duran trying his best to catch these two battling for the lead. Hopkins, a veteran of rally costs. He's very neat, very tidy. Pearson looking this way and that to try and find his way around this one. All oh, flying off, we see that's uh, Turpin going wide in the bottom of the screen, but up front it's all about Hopkins and Pearson. Both these cars, of course, former supercars from the rally world that uh, they're gonna be banned next year, but at the moment it's a big battle between the Ford and the Audi. Pearson trying which way and that to get, but he's sliding wide as they go onto the knife edge and Hopkins gets away a little bit. Pearson again again slides one on the knife edge and that's lost him a lot of ground there. He slid right out of the groove and uh, Hopkins has got a bit of breathing space behind him for the first time and can Doran now catch Pearson? Can Doran make the most of that mistake by Pearson who slid so wide? And they're sliding, there's very little grip in that mud spattered tarmac. Hopkins with quite a lead now. Doran with the bit between his teeth tries to catch Pearson through these tight asses. Sliding left, sliding right, getting the power down. Up to Paddock Hill Bend, through the gearbox before it's hard on the brakes again to slick it right. Into Paddock, onto the loose, opposite lock, down the hill, braking again. Left and right through these tricky asses. So important as we come back onto the racetrack here to get good traction on the tarmac, not to get quite that sideways patch and he's breathing deeper than ever as we go into Druid. Hopkins is very easy out front. It's Dora doing all the work in third as Hopkins looks for a place on the back row of the grid for that final. The A final beckons Hopkins. Pearson battles behind in the big Audi to hold off Doran. But uh, Trevor Hopkins is looking good out front. Transmission whining backing up and down through the gears. Opposite lock with one hand, changing gear the other. Have to change gears so often he hardly ever gets two hands back on the steering wheel. There, opposite lock in one hand through the S's. The back body work that was knocked in that first corner instance seems to be coming loose. It's mainly fiberglass. It shouldn't cause too much of a problem, but it's very spectacular. As the body work almost coming off. Pearson has caught back up with Hopkins at the front, taking Doran with him. Looks like Pearson's the fastest man on the track at the moment as Big Pat fights to keep his Ford on the track. More opposite lock, more deep breaths. The balaclava puffing in and out. Hopkins, though, still looks un falteringly good up front as he goes back onto the knife edge to start his last lap, heading towards the A-final. Pearson closes in. Doran now dropped away a little bit with that wild slide, and really, can Pearson do anything about Hopkins in this last lap? Back out onto the tarmac. Slip sliding away. Pearson goes even wider than Hopkins. Doran takes the neat line, gets the power down. That's the way to do it. But he's got an awful lot to do. The body works all over the place. Tire smoke, flames from the turbocharger. Pearson closing in through the S's. Half a lap to try and get past Hopkins. 
Zoran now, his hopes of repeating last year's victory look very slim indeed. He needs to win this B final to even have a chance in the A final. And he's getting wilder and wilder. The bodywork looks even worse. Once more through the S's, left and right. Big slide, 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 slide. And he's losing time there, kicking the dirt up. Doran struggles, but Hopkins looking good in front. Pearson hasn't caught him. Trevor Hopkins is going to win this B final and go through to the back of the grid for the A final. And he does so now. Doran brings his battered car through to the third. Pearson, a very good second up ahead of him, but Pat has worked very hard today. A lot of problems, drive shaft failures, but Big Pat hits third place in the B final. For Trevor Hopkins, victory in the B final, and onto the back row of the grid for the A final, and a chance for more glory. Confirmation then of those results, Hopkins the winner from Bertel Pearson. Last year's winners, Pat Duran, only making third. Well, that was action of plenty. There's going to be a lot more in the A final, the grand final. Two long years of painful rehabilitation have preceded this. The legacy of his terrible injuries remain. But this Vauxhall Nova Challenge event could help convince the sport that Martin Donnelly still had a racing future. The last time that Donnelly raced at Brands Hatch, he won the International Formula 3000 race. But this was Rallycross, where a Formula One reputation counts for little. To compete here, Donnelly has to forget everything about Formula One car control and sophisticated racecraft. But in a way, it's the ideal format to resume a racing career. Donnelly had taken second place in a competition at Nuts Corner in Belfast earlier this year. That was his return to racing. But Formula One is still the main target, and Rallycross is obviously a totally different kind of skill. I tell you, I mean, obviously I'm used to driving on proper race circuits where they've been dry, and this just, anything you learn from that just goes totally out the window. I mean, they're talking about running slicks on this now. You know, it's wet, it's greasy, there's mud and there's water, and they want to run slicks on it, you know. But uh, apart from all that, I mean, it's fantastic fun. Everybody is like one big family, but it makes you feel very welcome. And uh, it's not taken as seriously as FF1 or, or F3. But the serious business for Donnelly was the Nova Challenge final, described by Tiff Nidell. After three qualifying heats with the best two counting, it was Mick Bird who lined up to take pole position onto the left-hand side of the circuit, with former Ford RS200 campaigner Mark Rennison alongside, and then Rob Coates and David Crockett on the second row, ahead of Lyndon Barton, Darren Taylor, Tony Lynch, Jeff Lester, all ahead of our Nova novice Martin Donnelly on the back row, waiting way, well, should be waiting, he's creeping. He was... <laughs> and I think they've caught Martin Donnelly. Yes, they have. In uh, Rallycross, they don't let them go and penalise them afterwards. They stop the start. Martin Donnelly is given the warning flag for creeping at the first start. If he does that again, you're going to get it disqualified, Martin. This time, away they go. The red changes to green. And ten Novas go battling up for all panic. But it's Martin is battling with his gears. I think Donnelly's uh, had some troubles getting into the gears. Mick Bird, though, takes his pole position into a lead at Paddock. And Martin Donnelly arrives and all oh, and round he goes. Martin, well, he's having a very interesting time. That's Jeff Lester he's made contact with. For Martin, it's back into first gear again to get started, leaving Lester behind. And Martin Donnelly's got a lot to do to catch up this frantic pack. And it's uh, Mick Bird, though, that's up in the lead into Druid's Hill Corner for the first time, and that's ahead of Mark Rennison and Rob Coates as they battle round Druids. And there, Lester gets going again. Jeff Lester needs some help from the marshal, but Mick Bird needs no help at all. In the background, though, Coates trying to go around the outside of Rennison. Rennison gives him a little touch, as if to say, no, you're not coming around the outside of me. And uh, Coates drops back into third place. Rennison in second. Rob Coates now has to think of something else. And, well, that's something new. He's thought of something. He's pushing Rennison. Rennison sideways with Coates pushing him along. And Rob Coates says, you knock me, I'll push you, but still doesn't get by. He pushes him again. And uh, Renison under huge attack from Rob Coates. Coates then now goes wide, lost ground. Renison begins to get away from him. And Rob Coates now drops away a little bit into third place. And he's got David Crockett there smoking from tyre smoke. Oh, Coates goes the wrong way. Coates goes onto the uh, paddock. It looks like the rear wheel's locked up. Perhaps he's got locked brakes. 
Meanwhile, midfield, there's all sorts. Oh, and there's more knocking going on. That's uh, Tony Lynch pushing Darren Taylor, while Scott Wallace watches from behind. Lynch then makes his escape, but Taylor now loses another place to Wallace, gives him a tap as he goes by, and uh, Taylor's having a very well. Wallace has gone out wide onto the dirt. Martin Donnelly now catching these people as they battle away. Martin looking smooth, Taylor looking wild again, and that's Martin Donnelly going to try and get on the outside of Wallace. But uh, he's out on that, ooh, onto that. We've seen so many people out onto that loose, mucky stuff. Martin learning all the time. Martin Donnelly having great fun. Goes past Taylor finally. Taylor looking as though he might have slowed. But Martin using all his skills and learning a lot more. Beside, as Crockett holds onto that out wild into the background. That's uh, Tony Lynch having a very wild time at getting it back under control, unlike Mick Bird, who seems to have everything under control, as opposed to Darren Taylor, who's giving up. But one man not giving up is our man Martin Donnelly. Despite all his problems, he's battling through. Down from Paddock Hill Bend, he's going to catch these boys up ahead. He's going to show them a thing or two. That's Scott Wallace, his next target. He nearly got past him once. Martin playing with the steering, trying to find the grip on this greasy surface. But this is the battle for third place, and that's David Crockett battling hard, holding off Lyndon Barton. And uh, Barton trying to get that third place off of him, still smoking David Crockett from that uh, probably a tyre rubbing on the bodywork. And Barton looks like he's had a few dents already, but uh, Crockett's still ahead of him. Barton in fourth place. The front two getting well away after Rob Coates disappeared from third place. But this is the battling Barton and his uh, very dented Nova following the smoky Crockett. Up ahead of them, Renison tries to catch Mick Bird, but Bird really both these two well out. And here, ooh, that's Crockett banging with Barton, and he pushes him sideways, and Barton, already dented and battered, takes some more blows. Crockett now smokes even more than he's been smoking for this same close far, but he holds on to third place. He's now been caught by Tony Lynch, who's had some wild moments of his own. Can Crockett help? This is the last lap. Bird looks safe up front, Renison safe in second. This has been the battle of the race. Here is Mick Bird going back onto the knife edge, waving to the marshals. It's been such a nice Sunday afternoon drive for him. He's got a very undented car, and he's also got the Nova final victory trophy on his shelf. Who'll be third? It looks like Crockett is going to hold off of Lynch, and there Barton got going again down in third, fourth, fifth place as the smoking Crockett takes a well fought third. With our man Donnelly, he came through into seventh, but in actual fact, Crockett was excluded for that instant with Barton, so he finished sixth. Mick Bird, then the winner from Mark Renison and Tony Lynch, with the battling Barton fourth. And so to the main Grand Prix final for which European Rallycross champion Will Gollop was the clear favourite. A race which would be the sport's final celebration of these Group B rally cars, typified by Gollop's 650 horsepower MG Metro 6R4. The sport and its regulations will change next year and the forceful driving style of Gollop will be seen in a Peugeot. But in practice on Saturday, he was clearly in determined mood, keen to add a third Grand Prix title and no small misjudgment was going to affect his mood. It'd be nice to win it. it uh, I think it would be a record three, three times. And, uh, but I'm under a lot of pressure this weekend. Uh, power is not what it's about. Uh, I think about 400 horsepower would do very nicely, instead of about 650. Is this the last outing for Will Gollop and his famous Metro? Um, it could be, yes. We were trying to put a deal together to go to Pikes Peak next year to do the hill climb there. Um, whether that comes off or not, I don't know, but uh, this could definitely be the last rally course. Yeah. So Gollop to pole position for the final of the 1992 Autoglass British Rallycross Grand Prix. He was the favourite, but some tough opposition was close by. And leading that opposition was Barry Squibb in an escort which won this event eight years ago, developed by the legendary Martin Skanker. Squibb looks happy, but there's a lot of powerful opposition lining up behind him and Gollop on that front row of the grid. Third best after the qualifying heats was John Welch and his Astra, sharing that second row with Rob Gibson. Third row, Cor Oyser coming over from sports car racing in Holland to impress mightily in his Metro, sharing that third row with British champion Dennis Biggerstaff. They're ahead of Pekka Rantanen, Jan Iverson and Dubliner Dermot Carnegie as they line up to wait for the red to change to green. Trevor Hopkins on the back of the grid having won that B final. He's got a lot of work to do, but Gollop wants to get into the lead. Squibb goes, Squibb takes off from the start. Oh, and gets sideways, backwards one way and, well, 
nearly took out Gollop. Gibson and Everson take advantage to get through in second and third. Here is, but no, oh, Everson's gone out wide. He's thrown away that advantage. Squibb still fighting his form. Bang! All into the back of the Astra. And Barry Squibb has had the most dramatic 400 yards of his life. And it's still going on. Squibb there, Gibson. Squibb hits Gunning. Barry Squibb's hit everybody now. He's uh, trying to get under control in fourth place. Gollop is loving all this. Gollop didn't make the best start, really, when the lights switched, but he's made the best getaway. He gets onto the knife edge. Here we're in car with Welch. Welch gets those wipers going. Jets of water. There's mud plenty on the knife edge. Gibson, though, right behind Welch. Welch not going to have any easy time of this. Rob Gibson, a very determined man. He was second last year. Rattanen has got up into fourth place ahead of uh, Squibb. Here we're in car with Squibb again. So Barry Squibb, for whom uh, so much promise today. He was third in this event last year. He was on the front row of the group. He's now down in fifth place with a lot of work to do. Gibson. Tremendous in his metro. Welsh now, the windscreen getting muddied as Gollop gets away. So John Welsh, he's got a lot to worry about though because he's got Rob Gibson pushing from behind. The front of Gibson's car falling off. The fiberglass wing must have made some contact. Barry Squibb still trying to get past Rantanen and right behind him, Cor Oyser and, and uh, Trevor Hopkins up from the back of the grid doing very well. But at the moment, it's all about second place. Although in actual fact, it looks like Welsh is closing on Gollop. So Welsh has got his his head down, he's pulled away from Gibson, this is the big two, but now that screen is very mucky indeed, and uh, this is always the problem in Rallycross, if you get behind here, clear view up ahead of Will Gollop, he can see exactly where he's going, and John Welsh has got it all to do, he's pulled away from Gibson, so can Welsh really pull a surprise out, Gibson gets sideways, loses a lot of time there, Rantanen tries to get past, Squibb's trying to get past him, Oyser's right alongside Hopkins, here's Squibb, Squibb's taken to the grass to get past Hopkins, Hopkins was slow there. Can Squibb get in? Oh, bang! Sideways. There's four of them. Four abreast. They can't all get through. Core Oyser makes the most of it. He gets through. Squibb's up the edge. Oyser's on the grass one side. Squibb's on the grass on the other. And it's Core Oyser that's through to third place ahead of Squibb in fourth. And Gibson obviously in trouble as big a star and uh, Trevor Hopkins trying to get. Hopkins does get around him. So Rob Gibson has gone from third place to nowhere in half a lap. And uh, that's a problem with bigger staff now tries to get through. Gibson spins, bigger staff punts him, and that's two staff across this year. Bigger staff, the British champion this year, not to be a Grand Prix winner. But now Trevor Hopkins has got through all of this. Rantanen's ahead of him. Oyser up in front, Core Oyser. But no, Rantanen slowing. That's uh, a shame there for the Finn. Pekka Rantanen out of the Grand Prix this year but not out at all. Out front is Will Gollop. A beautifully clear windscreen and a clear road ahead. Can anything stop? He's had trouble in the past with punctures and these rally cross tyres take a real pounding and uh, really that'll probably be Will's biggest worry now. He'll be careful not to get out too much onto the stones, not to get too sideways that can puncture the tyres. Here in the gloomy distance, all, uh, all Welsh can see is those brake lights glowing ahead in the gloomy afternoon at Brands Hatch. Squibbs through, Squibbs up to third. They can't hold him back. Barry Squibbs up to where he finished last year and he's charging hard. Will Gollop about to start his last lap. He's taking it very smooth and easy, you know, chopping across the curves. He's very worried about any problems with punctures, but uh, no problem really. Out front, they pass Ranton's car. One more lap for a record third victory in this Grand Prix and a tremendous finish to this Metro's career. These cars outlawed next year. It's going to be Group A based rally car style next year. And the Metro 6R4, so popular for so long, won't be on the international scene. Will Gollop, though, smooth as ever. Mr. Rallycross in Great Britain. John Welch chasing as hard as ever after him. His Astra will be legal next year, so he's probably thinking, I'll get you next year, Will. But Will certainly as smooth as ever. Down they go from Paddock through the S's. Left and right, no problems this year. Squibb's catching though. Look at this, Barry Squibb won't give up. He's bringing Coroyza with him. They're chasing John Welch up the hill for the last time. 
Barry Squibb third last year. It looks like it's going to be third again. He's across the curb on the inside, trying everything he knows to catch up. Will got eases back. No mistakes for Will and a tremendous third victory at the Brandsack British Rallycross Grand Prix. John Welsh holds on. Barry Squibb, the real entertainer, takes a battling third. And well, there's going to be nobody happier than Will Cobb. Here we go. Victory spins galore. Donuts on the tarmac. Donuts on the grass. I'm sure Brand Hatch will love him. Let's go on board for that start, though, with Barry Squibb. And oh, one way and the other arms flailing. Three of them get away to the left, but there's uh, John Welsh comes in, shuts the door in his face. And uh, he's about to start a very hectic. Rob Gibson gets sideways, almost gets past Gollop ahead, and Squibb still bat off. Well, that was really the beginning. Well, halfway through Squibb's 400 yards of madness. No madness, though, for Will Gollop as he steps forward to accept the acclaim of the Brands Hatch crowd. Winner again for the third time of the Rallycross Grand Prix ahead of John Welsh and Barry Squibb. Was it an easy run for Will? After Barry nearly joined me in the, in the start there, <laughs> uh, it was relatively easy, yeah. We just watched the mirrors and... Uh, sort of uh, stroke it along. Did Barry uh, go before the green or were you a bit slow? Oh, I, I don't know whether I was a bit slow, but Barry definitely got a good start, but it didn't do him a lot of good, did it? So a great finish to a, a great year for you. Yes, very happy with it. I don't think we could have done much better. And goodbye to the Metro. Goodbye to the Metro, yeah, what a send-off.